Moving on to encapsulation. Encapsulation refers to an object's ability to hide data and behaviors that are not necessary to its user. Now, the term user doesn't necessarily mean the end user of the application. They're talking about anyone who uses those classes and um, which includes other developers who are responsible for other parts of the application. Um, so for example, we have our bank account class which has um, two public properties. One is um, balance and the other is type. And you can see below they both have getter and setter uh, methods. So both are public and can be assigned and retrieved from any other class in the application. And this seems a bit dangerous because if we, if you watched our previous video, you saw that um, uh, a lot of our um, interacting with our bank application is sitting in the graphical user interface. We, you'll see we have two methods here, uh, two clicking events, two buttons, and one is the draw click, which draws $50 and the other one deposits a hundred and if you watched the previous tutorial you saw that we um, added an additional line here which actually assigned a value of five hundred dollars to the balance now this is dangerous having this much um, um, ha uh, having this much access to these these properties that really should be private and well protected um, is not good by design so we really need to move this functionality into the the bank account class and I will be able to show you that once we move on to our example. Well we're back in Visual Studio and just to recap from our last video we created this bank of .NET um, banking application and as you can see when we run it we're able to retrieve our customer correctly and he has his balance of $100 and we can draw $50 the drawing function works fine but as soon as we go and deposit um, the deposit functionality is not working and that's because the logic is currently sitting in the UI and someone's gone and added this extra line of code here by mistake and reassigned the balance. They've assigned the value of 500 to it where um, this responsibility really should be moved back into our bank account class and the bank account class should be taking care of this kind of logic so that nobody outside of the application uh, or nobody outside of the um, bank account class can can do something like this by mistake so we're going to go to the bank account class and this is where all of the magic needs to happen um, uh, currently the balance and the type are both public and we really need to protect these variables and only allow them to get assigned when the object is created and then after that um, only perform the operations against um, the bank account that they should be allowed to, like draw fifty dollars or deposit a hundred, and so we're going to start off by adding two private variables, and uh, I'm going to make a decimal, and we're going to have this private balance decimal, and then private string type for the bank account type, and um, and then next up I'm going to add a constructor. which takes is going to take the uh, some kind of ID so that we can um, when the object gets created we can then go and um, if we had a database that we were connecting to then it can use the customer's ID to retrieve their bank account and just for proof, proof of concept uh, I'm just going to say customer ID equals one and we're going to assign pretend that customer ID is our customer uh, that the customer ID D1 is our current customer and we're going to assign the value of five hundred dollars to balance and the account type is going to be a checking account and uh, so when this variable gets created it's um, created and it retrieves the balance and the type of account. And now um, the functionality we want, we want other classes to be able to retrieve the balance and account type but we don't want them to be able to assign new values to them um, unless that was an actual operation um, that they needed. So we're going to 
add a method public decimal get balance and this will retrieve our new balance and public string get type so that we can retrieve our type of account and now so we're able to retrieve both of those and then finally we need to move this draw and deposit logic into the business bank account so we're going to create two more method stubs public void and I'm making it void because it's not going to return anything and um, this is deposit fifty dollars and this process of protecting and hiding and moving functionality into the class that is and only exposing the methods needed is the process of encapsulation and uh, so now when we deposit it's draw sorry let's start with our draw when we draw fifty dollars and then void deposit one hundred dollars Um, now we've exposed the two methods that do exactly what we need them to and no one else can mess with them outside. We can go back and change our code because all of a sudden we are no longer allowed to change the balance. We can only call draw method, our, draw, our new draw method and for our deposit we can only call our deposit method and now we just have to fix our um, our uh, initial when the object gets created and uh, our bank account you can see it has a little red dot because all of a sudden it requires us to provide a custom ID so we said it was customer one and we can no longer set the balance or the account type outside of the bank account class um, and then down here we can get our new balance and I'm going to call the toString method as before to format it as a currency and get type which will get our string and uh, the last thing I want to do is that we just have to after the draw button is clicked to um, then um, retrieve our new balance and display it correctly and same with deposit and now let's go ahead and run this and now we can view the customer you can see it assigned the five hundred dollars and we can draw fifty bucks and deposit a hundred and it's working and nobody can come in and now try to um, adjust the change the account balance outside of the bank account class because it we just don't have the option to